Hey everyone, welcome. I'm gonna start a little early, is that okay? And we'll do the, uh, let's do a decade of the rosary. Okay. We'll meditate, so hard to pick. Uh, there's 20 mysteries. I'm not sure what we should meditate on. Glorious? Which glorious? The crowning of Mary, okay, she's our queen. I'm gonna show you there's a way to say that when you say Jesus, um, you say crowning thee. So it's St. Louis de Montfort has this idea of a rose, the way to pray the rosary where you, after the word Jesus, you put in a word or phrase that relates to that mystery so that you never forget the mystery. Okay, so it's, he says, in order to do this, um, it, this is a shorter way of commemorating the life, death, and glory of Jesus, a way to curb our imagination to lessen distractions. So the way it would be is, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Okay, we'll try that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, <clears throat> the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in all Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray for Pope Francis' intentions, for the gifts of faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, before we die, and O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who must be. The first, or the mystery we'll meditate on is the coronation of Mary as queen of heaven and earth. We ask her to intercede for us tonight and uh, that we may have a new love for the rosary and a new, see it with the new eyes, a new value in our eyes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, not the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, crowning thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, we beseech thee, dear Lord Jesus, by the fifteen mysteries, by this mystery of the life, death, uh, by thy glory, by the merits of thy blessed mother, to convert sinners, help the dying, to deliver the souls from purgatory, and to give us all thy grace, so that we may live well and die well. And please give us the light of thy glory later on, so that we may see thee face to face and love thee for all eternity. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the intercession of thy well-beloved spouse. Amen. All right, well, thank you all for... Uh, Having me and I was late, you know, because I was doing mass at my own church uh, across town. So, uh, but it's great to be here. How do I, you know, last time I was here, I talked about Mary, and so now it's about the rosary. And it is a hard, broad topic. Um, and, but I felt the call to, to really, delve into this because it's something that I love. I pray the rosary every day, and I have uh, for a long time. And, uh, you know, this, I first was a kid. I remember uh, somebody brought the Fatima statue to our house, and that's where I started, like, praying the rosary. Not a lot, but I remember seeing all the mysteries, and that pamphlet has all the mysteries of the, of the rosary. Um, and... Uh, Recently, the rosary was called uh, an extremist symbol by this article. Did you see that? The Atlantic. And, uh, yeah, and, and it was, the, the title, though, was changed to be, uh, they changed the title because they realized it was a bad uh, thing to call the rosary, an extremist symbol. Obviously, the rosary goes beyond politics. It brings us to the very truth of who we are called to be, the truth of Jesus Christ. But in our days, you are perhaps called extreme if you hold to the fact that there is objective truth, that we, there is a way we have been created to be. Um, and, and so today we praise God for the rosary. And we think how many rosaries, for instance, um, have been said throughout the years. Um, and recently, obviously, I think the rosary is more controversial because we just had the overturning of Roe versus Wade. We saw the protests before Ro when the leak, the decision was leaked, and there was a lot of people, you know, praying the rosary, and uh, you see people praying the rosary. So just think how many rosaries um, were prayed uh, to for that intention, right? For the over for the end of abortion, and we still pray the rosary for that intention. Um, Today we celebrate a victory, Our Lady of Victory. Uh, that's when the rosary was, um, there was a, a naval battle, the Battle of Lepanto, that 
the, uh, in the late 1500s, the Christians uh, were outnumbered going against the Ottoman Turks. And then Ottoman Turks had never lost a battle and they would always be together, whereas the Christian fleet came were different, um, combi the Venetians, the Spanish, and different. But if they had lost this battle, then right now, uh, St. Peter's Basilica would have a mosque, would be a mosque. Uh, that's how it was scary it was, but the Christian world united. And the Pope asked that rosaries would be prayed, and there were processions, large processions with ro the rosary. And so right away the church attributed the victory to the Blessed Virgin Mary and the rosary. Um, they even brought an, an image of Our Lady Guadalupe on one of the ships, but it's not the Our Lady Guadalupe, it's a different one from Spain. Did you know there's another Our Lady Guadalupe? Um, but it's, it's not the one that, the most famous one that was painted by Jesus, by God. Um, and so, and so we, we rejoice in the victories that we've had through the prayer of the rosary. Um, recently, the right to life. Uh, Pope John Paul II, who I take a lot from this talk through Rosario, this uh, On the Most Holy Rosary, he declared a year of the rosary in 2002. And, and he talks about um, the importance of the rosary. He mentions the sanctity of life, the family, um, all the things we need to pray for. Um, Pope Saint Leo, uh, sorry, Pope Leo the Thirteenth. He says it has always been the habit of Catholics in danger and in trouble, troublesome times to fly for refuge to Mary and to seek for peace in her maternal goodness. And truly, the Immaculate Virgin, chosen to be the Mother of God, therefore thereby associated with Him in the work of man's salvation, has a, a favor and power with her Son greater than any human or angelic creature has ever obtained or ever can gain. And so, uh, her, this is her powerful intercession. It is her greatest pleasure to grant her help and comfort to those who seek her. It cannot be doubted that she would deign and even be anxious to receive the aspirations of the universal church. So when the church is asking for her prayers, she is praying. And he, now the Pope will talk about, uh, he wrote like 12 encyclicals, Pope Leo XIII on the rosary. He says, this devotion, so great and so competent to the August Queen of Heaven, has never shone forth with such brilliancy as when the militant Church of God has seemed to be endangered by the violence of heresy spread abroad. abroad. So the first purpose that the rosary had was the crushing of, of heresy, the heresy of the Albigensians. And it was given by Mary, the rosary, to St. Dominic. And a way of showing that the mysteries of our faith are not way up here, but really that God has become flesh. It's, it makes our faith incarnate, um, becoming flesh in our lives. Jesus real, and, and like he lived in Mary's house, and Ma Mary loved him and served him. And so these mysteries are not way above there, but they're things that happen, because our faith is, is based on a person, is based on something that happened, that Jesus truly walked this world. And so the, the rosary, we're, we're meditating on these mysteries. How many of you know, uh, have all the memories, the mysteries of the rosary memorized? How many of you uh, don't really? Okay. So, all right, well, that, that's great. Um, you know, it's a little intimidating. There's 20. When I first was intimidated and saw the, how many mysteries, there are 15. Now there's 20. Um, the Luminous Mysteries, which is a, a real uh, blessing. And so, and then the Pope will talk about how then the, in the 1571, he says, the, it was the rosary that was, which was responsible for the victory of the Christian forces at the Battle of Lepanto against the forces of the Turks in 1571. Um, it is through the rosary that St. Dominic overcame the Albigensian heresy. And there's many Popes. We have Urban the, the Fourth. Every day the rosary obtained fresh boon for Christianity, he says. Um, all these popes, Pius, St. Pius V said, With the spread of this devotion, the meditations of the faithful have begun to be more inflamed, their prayers more fervent. They have suddenly become different men. The darkness of heresy has been dissipated, and the light of the Catholic faith has broken forth again. In pa pope Padre, er, Padre Pio, St. Pio, uh, says that the rosary is the weapon of our times. He said in the 1960s, he says, Some people are so foolish that they think they can go through life without the help of the Blessed Mother. 
He says, love the Madonna and pray the rosary, for her rosary is the weapon against the evils of the world today. All graces given by God pass through the Blessed Mother. Pope Pius XII said, we put great confidence in the Holy Rosary for the healing of the evils which afflict our times. In April 2014, um, Boko Haram, uh, this terrorist group that it kidnapped more than 200 young girls from a school in Nigeria, Africa. It's a radical a Muslim group that, that killed many non-Muslims, um, such as de decapitation, burning people alive. In December of 2014, Jesus appeared to a Catholic bishop in Nigeria and instructed him that the rosary was the weapon that would overcome Boko Haram. So Bishop Oliver Dash Doim of the Diocese of Maduguri, Nigeria, claims that one evening while he was praying his rosary, Jesus appeared to him holding a sword. During the vision, Jesus extended the sword toward the bishop. When the bishop went to take the sword from Jesus, it miraculously transformed into a rosary. Once the bishop had the rosary sword in his hands, Jesus looked at him and said three times, Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. And it is. The rosary is a weapon but the, the most humble person can take up. It's portable. You don't have to be able to even read. Um, the rosary, uh, I remember a friend told me that his dad was in the Vietnam War and they were they would go to these different buildings into different rooms with, with uh, machine guns. They'd clean out the room. They'd, they'd shoot it up, make sure nobody was in there. They'd just open the door and shoot it up. And, or actually, they would, they would, I'm sorry, they'd take a grenade and just put, toss a grenade in there. And he says his dad tells a story that he was about to go into this one room and take, pull the pin for the grenade to throw it in, but he felt this hand like this and to, to basically stop it. And he opened the door, and there's this woman with children. They're praying the rosary. Um, rosary brings peace. You know, I remember um, just when we pray the rosary, it calms everyone down. I remember my, a girl got in a really bad car accident, and we were rushing to the hospital uh, to see her. And just praying that rosary, it just gives us all peace, gave us all peace, that rhythm. Um, praying for, the rosary is powerful. You, you can pray it. Um, praying for a dying person, praying, comforting them when you're there, when they're their last days, and you're praying the rosary with them is powerful. It, it brings peace to them. Um, so we're like, whenever we pray the rosary, like we pray together, we're organized. We're like children of Mary gathered in the upper room. Um, and we allow Mary, just like she taught the apostles, Mary teaches us through these mysteries. Something uh, today about the rosary today is necessary. Mary, when she appeared, for instance, in Guadalupe, in Mexico, she didn't tell people to pray the rosary. She didn't have a rosary. But something about our modern times, I think the rosary is more necessary. Uh, Mary appeared at Lourdes in the 1858, uh, and this is a time of much scientific progress um, and, and just atheism spreading, um, and she, she had a rosary. And Bernadette would pray the rosary every time Mary, before she, she spoke to her, before, before Mary appeared. And so, um, so really that, so the rosary in this time, uh, Mary's the model of faith. And she appears uh, and does these amazing miracles like with the water and just confounding people um, that don't, you know, wants to inspire faith in us. So the rosary, also at uh, Fatima, the, uh, she, she had called herself Our Lady of the Rosary, and she asked the children to pray the rosary every day uh, for the end of the war, World War I, and to pray the rosary for the conversion of sinners. And she, that was her name. She presented herself, I am the, lazy of the, the Lady of the Rosary. Um, so why is the rosary important for our time? War, atheism, loss of faith, um, faith in the mysteries. As the Pope said the rosary is important, uh, Pope Leo as a hammer against heresy, and that's its origin was to go against heresy, which was dualistic. The Albigensian heresy said that the body was evil and the spirit was good. The body was bad. There was, uh, and so really it did, didn't really 
believe that you know the real like Christ really became flesh that he was really human and truly divine truly human and so today the same the heresy you could say that the body is not important our sexuality uh, being male and female in God's image um, the sanctity of the, the, the baby at the moment of conception in the womb, um, the sanctity of the womb. Mary. And so these mysteries, um, Mary's womb, uh, the, you know, I'm sorry, the joyful mysteries, meditating on Christ's birth, uh, luminous mysteries, um, marriage, you know, the wedding feast at Cana, baptism, um, the importance of the supernatural baptism, the Eucharist, that Christ took flesh, um, the divinity of Jesus and the transfiguration. So these mysteries, we meditate on the birth of Jesus, becoming flesh in her womb. Uh, all these things can... So like the rosary is very incarnational. It, it's about God becoming flesh. We meditate on how God became flesh in Mary's womb and how Jesus was born of Mary, how he really suffered in his body. We meditate that in the sorrowful mysteries. So remember, there's the joyful mysteries, then there's these uh, luminous mysteries, and then there's the sorrowful mysteries, and there's the glorious mysteries. Uh, so those are, and there's all parts, like, so the, lumen, the, the joyful includes his birth, his, his uh, Mary, the angel appearing to Mary. The, the sorrowful talks about how Jesus died for us, his sufferings. And then obviously the glories, glories is the uh, glorious mysteries is the resurrection, the resurrection, and um, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So these are all scriptural. So the the rosary makes us meditate, allows us to meditate on the truths of our faith. And so, um, so really, all today's errors you could say is about the human person. So that's why Mary, the rosary, she helps us to to remember who we are and turning to Mary, she helps us to remember that we are all made to be full of grace, who we're called to be in, as male and female, as filled with grace, that, um, you know, Mary, she was assumed into heaven with a body, you know, so the body is, is, is part of us, it's sacred, right? We're body, soul, composites. Um, Christ rose with his glorified body. Um, so we are called to be like Mary, to imitate her virtues, holiness. Her yes is what brought us life. We have to be like her. As she said, let it be done to me according to your word. Um, and so Mary inspires us to say yes to God, to God's will, to God's plans, to be obedient like Mary. Um, because the devil wants to bring us down. The scripture talks about in Revelation 12 that there's a war between the woman and the dragon. Um, the dragon makes war on the woman and the rest of her offspring. It says, those who keep the commandments of Jesus. Do we keep the commandments? We have to live in this covenant with him to follow his way. We place ourselves under Mary's care. Just as the, She is our mother in the order of grace. That's why Jesus on the cross said, woman, behold your son looked at Mary and said, Behold your mother. So, so yes, the rosary is a weapon. It is a weapon against the dragon which makes war on us by helping us to be always childlike, humble, and to live with faith. The rosary helps us to have that posture of Mary, the posture of receptivity, receiving the Word of God. And the Word of God for her was not just a word, something, but it's someone, her son. And she got to contemplate that Word of God every day of, uh, you know, since she had Jesus for the last 30, um, after she was 15 on till 30, you know, whatever, 33 years. It says, um, Mary constantly sets before the faithful the mysteries of her son with the desire that the contemplation of those mysteries will release all their saving power. In the recitation of the rosary, the Christian community, community enters into contact with the memories and contemplative gaze of Mary. And so we enter into her memories, into her, her contemplation. And like the Bible says, Mary observed all these things and kept all these things in her heart, meditating on them in her heart. And so we want to have that immaculate heart. She's our model. We should have that immaculate heart. We want her immaculate heart of triumph, that heart that says yes to God's will, 
not my will, but thy will be done, right? And it's hard sometimes, but saying yes to even life, uh, yes to uh, his plan for us, trust. And so that immaculate heart helps us to, um, to have this love and reverence for Jesus, for Jesus in the Eucharist, Jesus in all the mysteries of the rosary, in his word. Um, Mary helps take us away from our sins. She obtains graces of conversion for us. Um, and this really was what led me to my conversion, and I'll go into that in a little bit. So why is the rosary important for our times? Pope Leo the Thirteenth says that it's because we're so busy. The Christian is kept so busy by the various affairs of life and wanders so easily into matters of little importance that unless he be helped with frequent reminders, the truths which are of first importance and necessity are little by little forgotten, and then faith begins to grow weak and may even perish. This is like 1870 when he wrote, or 1890 when he wrote that, and so. If he says we're busy back then, just think how busy we are now. How many of you, have, you know, your phone? How like, you know, we? You, you, how often do you check that phone? You know, it's like, it's it's just crazy how easily we get distracted. He says, um, and indeed, in the Rosary, along with the most beautiful and efficacious prayer arranged in an orderly pattern, the chief mysteries of our religion follow one another as they are brought before our mind for contemplation. So even the Pope is talking about the rosary, it's like thinking about mysteries coming before our mind. It's almost like swiping, you know, swiping for images. But instead it's, it's, it's the mysteries of Christ and, and his life and the life he shared with Mary and, and Mary's yes. Um, this uninter- he says, in this uninterrupted sequence of wonderful events, the rosary frequently and perseveringly recalls to the minds of the faithful and presents them presents almost as though they were unfolding before our eyes in this, flooding the, the souls of those who devoutly recite it with a sweetness of piety that never grows weary, impresses and stirs them, stirs them as, that, as though they were listening to the very voice of the Blessed Mother, explaining the mysteries and conversing with them at length about their salvation. So when we're meditating on those mysteries, like Mary is showing us this. She's teaching us. She's showing us her son. And she's with us, praying with us. So it's the most powerful prayer. The rosary, you're praying to our Father. The Lord's Prayer five times in each, in each uh, five decades. Our Father, you know, that's the prayer Jesus taught us. And then the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. That's what the angel told Mary, full of grace. And that's a reminder of us that we're called to be full of grace. We're called to holiness. And, you know, and as Elizabeth said, blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And so... We, and Mary said, all generations will call me blessed. So we bless her, and we ask her to pray for us. She is our model of faith, because Christ didn't have faith. He's God. He saw, he had a divine vision, the beatific vision. Mary didn't. But she's our model of faith in the new covenant. The old covenant, Abraham is our model. But the, the new covenant, it's Mary. And so, um, and so you were in a day where we want to have a lot of images, as I said, it's, so it's like the rosary is like a multi-season mini-series of, of Jesus' life. So five, four sets, you could say four seasons, and five episodes each. <laughs> and so you get to like get into those episodes and see them with Mary's eyes, you know, especially like the, the Sorrowful Mysteries. You imagine Mary seeing her son being crucified, seeing her son carrying the cross, and just... And Mary's teaching you, look at my son. You know, look how patient he is carrying that cross. You, I pray that you can be patient carrying your cross. Uh, look at my son being crowned with thorns. How courageous he is. He doesn't, he's being mocked, mocked by these soldiers. You can be patient and you can be courageous, not afraid what people think of you. You know, not to be so, uh, have so much vanity or human respect. So these mysteries touch our lives. They affect a, us. There's a fruit in all the mysteries. In all the, I don't know where it is. I had a, a the fruits of all the mysteries are, are uh, you can like, in this book, Secret of the Rosary, it has like all, every rosary, like um, decade has like a certain fruit of it or like something you can learn from it, you know. And it's in the little blue pamphlets too that are in my church in St. Joseph. Um, 
it's so, this is, so I'm just so blessed. Like, I get so busy at work, you know, um, and I don't work in a skyscraper right here. I work in a church. Yeah, I can imagine you, you work at somewhere it's not even, like, uh, faith-based, you know, and, and I get bogged down, you know, answering emails and all that. I need to get out, and I need to walk around and pray the rosary. That, for me, is like, I love it. So I walk around the, uh, my little neighborhood praying the rosary, and just it's like a flower of all these mysteries. Every day I get to meditate on transfiguration. Uh, so like I'm trying to do four rosaries a day. And it sounds like a lot, but I don't, I'm not quite, I, I just started it because I heard a talk by uh, Gabe Castillo um, and then I, and some Keenan as well, this seminarian on the YouTube. Um, he's our seminarian. He's not, and he, and, uh, and I'm trying to do that, but I've only, I, I, sometimes I get two sets in, but at least I'm getting these different mysteries in. And one time I got all, all four in, and I was just like, and I was just like, wow, like, I feel so, like, blessed, like, like, meditating on, 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 like, all the scriptures of Christ's life. It's like a flowering of, like, his passion, his death, his, the transfiguration. Like, our separated brothers, do they get to med, do they think about all these mysteries as often as we do if we pray the rosary? The transfiguration, you know, the death and resurrection, the birth, Mary, like, her yes. So there's so much, like, it just, it, it kind of forms our hearts, like, because we're praying, um, Mary's praying with us, and she's like, and, and don't forget, she's full of grace, so she's sharing this grace with us, so like, the mysteries start to like seep into our, our lives. Um, so Mary, when we pray the rosary, uh, you know, basically Mary's with us. Um, that's what Pope John Paul II says, that um, basically you're mystically, she said, he says, the rosary, the rosary mystically transports us to Mary's side as she is busy watching over the human growth of Christ in the home of Nazareth. This enables her to train us and to mold us with the same care until Christ is fully formed in us. Um, it gives me joy. Uh, so the different fruits of the mystery, so like, it gives me joy to meditate on Christ's birth and then fortitude and like pa strength and patience so I meditate on his passion um, and then and like his love meditating on his crucifixion meditating on the glory of heaven like resurrection looking up like at the sky like thinking about Mary's Christ's ascension just remembering heaven that's what the scripture says this Sunday the second reading remember the Lord Jesus Paul says so we have this helps us to remember um, so this is a powerful prayer against evil, too. Father Gabriel Amorth, he's an Italian Roman Catholic priest, uh, Catholic priest. He's the chief exorcist of the Vatican, or he was. He says, One day a colleague of mine heard the devil say during an exorcism, Every Hail Mary is like a blow on my head. If Christians knew how powerful the rosary was, it would be my end. And then Gabriel Amorth says, The secret that makes this prayer so effective is that the rosary is both prayer and meditation. So it's a vocal prayer, but it's also uh, mental prayer. It's also meditation. And, you're addressed, and it's addressed to the Father, to the Blessed Virgin, and to the Holy Trinity. Because every decade finishes with the glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That's why when Bernadette was praying the rosary, Mary was, was letting the beads slide through her hands. Bernadette, Mary only bowed her head when, whenever Bernadette would say, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Right? Because she's praying with us, with her, for her, but she worships of the Trinity just like we do. Um, and Father Gabriel gives some, this, uh, after his experiences, he says, please enunciate each word of the rosary clearly and distinctly. In the public rosary, there are only two people speaking, the leader and the respondents. Each is speaking to the Blessed Mother and listening carefully to her response within their hearts as they meditate on the scene before them and their consideration of the mystery being spoken of and interpreted and translated into their life, lives. Spread this powerful prayer of exorcism, the rosary, which contains the Our Father, the perfect prayer, prayed five times in the recitation of each set of the rosary's mysteries, backed up by the powerful prayers of our mother who prays with us as we pray. She's the most powerful prayer partner you can imagine. Um, you might have heard the 
term, the family that prays together stays together. Father Patrick Payton, and he had these rosary rallies of like, in San Francisco, he had one of 500,000 people um, in the 50s, you know, bigger than Woodstock, which is later, and a lot more peaceful and holy. People just gathered to pray the rosary. Um, I, I, look, I would encourage you to, to go on uh, your Amazon Prime account and go look up Pray. It's called Pray. It's the story of Father Patrick Payton in the Rosary Crusade. The, and he came up with that, the family that prays together stays together. He got Bing Crosby, got all these actors uh, with like promoting it back then. Pope John Paul says that, uh, this is his quote about the rosary is good for the family. He says, many of the problems facing contemporary families, especially in economically developed societies, result from their increasing difficulty in communicating. Families don't communicate. Families seldom manage to come together, and the rare occasions when they do are often take up with watching television. To return to the recitation of the family rosary means filling daily life with very different images. Images on the, of the mystery of salvation, the image of the Redeemer, the image of his most blessed mother. The family that writes, recites the rosary together produces something of the atmosphere of the household of Nazareth. Its members place Jesus at the center. They share his joys and sorrows. They place their needs and their plans in his hands. They draw from him the hope and strength to go on. And so, praying the rosary. You know, like when the power goes out, there's no TV to watch. What do you do? You're with your family. You light a candle. You pray the rosary. It's beautiful. And then what happens afterwards? You start talking. You know, you start communicating. Um, I like how Pope says, economically developed societies. He came to the U.S. when he was a cardinal the first time, and he went to one of his friends house that has kids and it's like uh, one child and tons of toys and he's like this is enough toys for a whole nursery <laughs> that's his experience of the U his first experience of the US um, the the power of conversion st. Louis de Montfort in his secret of the rosary he says we be earnestly beg everyone to say the holy rosary so he he is the, one of the most important Marian saints he says, we earnestly beg everyone to say the Holy Rosary, the just, or the good, the just, that they may persevere and grow in God's grace, the sinners, that they may rise from their sins. But God forbid that we should ever encourage a sinner to think that Our Lady will protect him with her mantle if he continues to love sin, for then it will turn, only turn into a mantle of damnation. I have learned from my own experience, he says, that the Rosary has the power to convert even the most hardened hearts. I've known people who have gone to missions and who have heard sermons on the most terrifying subjects without being in the least moved. And yet after they had, on my advice, started to say the rosary every day, they eventually became converted and gave themselves completely to God. And so Mary teaches us, she forms us. But it's not enough just to learn who Jesus is, but John Paul II says, Christ is the supreme teacher. He says, it's not just a question of learning what he taught, but of learning him. In this regard, could we have any better teacher than Mary? From the divine standpoint, the Spirit is the interior teacher who leads us to the full truth of Christ. But among creatures, no one knows Christ better than Mary. No one can introduce us to a profound knowledge of his mystery better than his mother. And so, uh, I, w I will just say that in my own life, it was, I always had the rosary with me. And I think, uh, you know, it was just always on my bed post, my bed stand in college. Um, and I shared with this before, I was not living my faith. I was going to Mass on Sunday, but I was partying every day of the week in college almost. First year of college especially, first and two years. And... Uh, hook hook And I studied in Spain. I studied in Spain and... Um, I got to the point where I was like, I've gone too far, I have sinned, and I need God. And what did I do? I, w I prayed the rosary. I started praying the rosary. So I would walk around the, uh, Spain and Sevilla, I was by myself, with the rosary ball up in my hand. Nobody knew I was praying it, but I would just start praying it. Um, I remember I didn't think God forgave me, even though I had gone to confession. I started praying the rosary, praying the rosary. And I just felt Mary praying for me. I felt her comforting me, like this instinct in my soul was to like, I'm not worthy and I, 
I need Mary's prayers. Like she, I, it was like I was doing penance, and and like Mary's purity or holiness was always there because I always wore a scapular since I was in eighth, uh, sixth grade, and never took it off. Um, so yeah, I did drinking, you know, there were drugs around, uh, but it was basically the rosary that really brought me to Christ. Okay, um, and I printed. I went to the internet cafe and printed out the mysteries. I didn't know the mysteries. And, uh, and that's where like, I started like, learning it. And uh, Mary was leading me to a conversion. Um, and then I went to Fatima. So that same, like a month later, and the priest was like, you don't need to go to Fatima. I was like, I want to go to Fatima. And, uh, and I was like, I don't know how I knew about Fatima. I think it was because that Fatima statue had visited our house, but somehow I knew about it. And so it was going there, and going to confession that changed my life. So I, and I, it's, it's like heaven met earth there. Mary appeared there, and you feel her presence, like the holiness. And the holiness we're called to, it just inspires us. Um, so I need her, her prayer, uh, her motherly love. And the rosary, Mary, truly takes us by the hand. It's a chain that bonds us to Mary. Um, and so every time we pray the rosary, Mary is walking with us. Um, She's with us, you know. Um, before each mystery, state the mystery, think of it. Um, you know, when I pray the rosary, don't think you have to constantly, like, constantly think about the mystery. It's awesome if you can, if you can enter into that. But sometimes I'm just, like, thinking about, I'm just, like, picturing her with me, or I'm asking her, like, something I'm really praying for. But every, every time you do every mystery, you kind of want to, like, you need to touch down on, like, and touch that mystery and meditate on it a little bit. Um, and so we need to pray the rosary with the heart. The rosary has to change us. The rosary is all about God becoming flesh, the mysteries of, our, of Jesus. And so it teaches us to have this heart of faith and to, it really leads us into contact with Christ. And it's that which would, would transforms us. Um, so we need God to take flesh in us like he took flesh in Mary. Um, the rosary helps us to do this. Um, so receive his word like Mary did, meditating it on in your heart. And also like Mary, we have to serve. We have to, like she did, she served Elizabeth. She went and served. She was there at the foot of the cross. All the apostles fled. So, so stay close to her because the devil, this, there's a spiritual battle. The devil and the fallen angels, they want to take us away. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. We're all united to Christ. So Mary helps us to stay united to that vine so that we don't just try to do it on our own. We're, we're not on our own. We're part of the church. And, and you know, she's our mother. Um, and she's the first disciples. She's the first one to hear the good news. And she's our model of giving her life to that, faithful to the foot of the cross, there when the Spirit came on the church. And uh, she's there for you personally, praying for you. So let us ask Mary to keep us close to her son and see the rosary as, you know, a weapon to, you know, maybe you don't like that term, but it is. Like, say, if you're going through temptations, one night, it's late. You know, Eric Clapton has a song to the Virgin Mary, Holy Mother, you know. Holy Mother, hear my prayer. Um, and and uh, when he was suffering from addiction, um, so pray the rosary. Um, Mary keeps us, it helps those to be strong in our faith. Um, that's what we need is faith. That's faith conquers the world. Um, Jesus says when the Son of Man comes home, comes back, will he find faith on her? So if we're close to, to the woman, uh, to Mary, the new Eve, who said yes, we will also have faith. Amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All right. So, um, Stephanie? <laughs> Do you want to take any questions? Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll take questions. I try to hang the rosary in every room of my condo. The front, uh, in the front bedroom, uh, the front living room, the bathroom, but I'm um, not one in my kitchen. Uh, That's good. It's on your people's cars, too, I see a lot. That's, you know, hanging. 
as long as you pray it, you know, I think it's just, it's a, uh, it's good to have it as a reminder of our Blessed Mother. And if that helps you to, to think about her and the rosary and you want to pray it, do that. I mean, the rosary is really famous, sacramental, you know, it's, it's very well known, not just by Catholics, uh, people know it, you know, and even non-Catholics are praying the rosary sometimes, it's pretty amazing. Um, it is powerful prayer. I remember I was at the abortion clinic when I was a seminarian kneeling, like praying the rosary, and it's like, all of a sudden this like, guy comes out, like, he's like, they're killing babies in there, like, and he, his wife wanted to have one, he didn't want one, and it was just like, you just saw the power of, of the prayer, and she just followed him, and uh, any, anyone else have a question? I have a question, uh, why has the only apparition in North America been in Wisconsin? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Our Lady of Good Help. And that whole thing is about teaching, about teaching our children the catechism, you know. So we need to do that. That's, she's, that apparition in the U.S. is teaching our faith. So we need to teach the kids our faith, you know, not just uh, how to make collages, you know, but really to know their faith and, and, and catechism. So unchanging truths of the faith. It's hard, but... And so we, we teach that to them the best we can. I, uh, I just, I, I never did, I, I, I discovered that the rosary is actually the life of Jesus and Mary, and it started with Mary and the angel, Gabriel, coming to her and announcing that you were chosen by God and that she did believe, but she didn't know how. The Holy Spirit came upon her. So then the whole life starts with that with the angel and then of course <coughs> what That's I never it. even thought about was Mary stood at the cross and someone mentioned that even when they took the nails out of his hands and feet she was patiently waiting to embrace his body again like she embraced it when he came into the world so it was like this is just this is what a mother would do no, no one good. would want to stand there but oh, love love had her there and so many people find it so hard to love Mary, but when you think about what her life was all about, it was all about God. It was all about Jesus. Everything for Jesus. And so it makes me say, I want to be like that. I want I want to marrow Mary and say everything for Jesus. I fall short, but I want to say, I, I get back up. I, I go to confession. I dust myself off, and I try to continue. And I always think about that one where she says, do whatever he tells you. But I don't know which mystery that comes in, but I just remember, do whatever he tells you. What do you so that's an important us, one. She leads us to the Lord. Yes, that, that features prominently in this book by St. John Paul II. It's called, it's on the Most Holy Rosary. It's a really good book. And, uh, and I think we should really pray, when we pray the rosary, we should pause. Like he, St. Louis de Montfort encourages us to be like, Hail Mary, full of grace, pause. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus is the center of that prayer. You know, uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. So it's a meditative. I think sometimes we get this impression of the rosary. We think about how it's prayed so fast and just get through it. And, and so we have to really try to make it more meditative when we do it. You know, um, sometimes you might rush it a little bit, but like uh, St. Louis says that, you know, it's so much more powerful when we pray the rosary uh, well, like, you know, just like not hurrying. So, um, let's see. He says, it is really pathetic to see how most people say the Holy Rosary. They say it astonishingly, astonishingly fast and mumble so that the words are not properly pronounced at all. We could not possibly expect anyone, even the most unimportant person, to think that a slipshod ad address of this kind is a compliment. You know, we expect Jesus and Mary to be pleased with it. It's like not a compliment to Mary when you're saying it. Small wonder then that the most sacred prayers of our holy religion seem to bear no fruit and that after saying thousands of rosaries, we are still no better than we were before. Dear confraternity members, I beg of you to temper the speed which comes all too easily to you and pause 
briefly several times as you say the Our Father and Hail Mary. I place a cross at each pause, as you will see. So he, he writes how to, how to pray it. Um, he says, before beginning a decade, pause for a moment or two, depending upon how much time you have, and contemplate the mystery that you are about to honor in that decade. Always be sure to ask of Almighty God by this mystery and through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, one of the virtues that shines forth most in this mystery, of, or one of which you stand in particular need. Take great care to avoid two pitfalls. The first is the danger of not asking for any graces at all, so that if some people were asked their rosary intention, they would not know what to say. So whenever you say your rosary, be sure to ask for some special grace. Ask God's help in cultivating one of the great Christian virtues or in overcoming one of your sins. The second big fault a lot of people make when saying the rosary is to have no intention other than that of getting it over as quickly as possible. This is because many of us look upon the rosary as a burden which is always heavier when we have not said it, especially if it is weighing on our conscience because we have promised to say it regularly. So, uh, what is that you're from? the secret of the rosary, St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, yeah, and, and so I think sometimes I can see the rosary that same way. It's just kind of like a side prayer. It's like not really that important. Like it's just, you know, and I do it kind of like, I just, it's comforting, but, and it is. And I think it's still powerful, like if you pray, like, but we need to try to see the mysteries as like the, is, is important, you know, those mysteries. Like, like Pope Leo said, and Pope John Paul, it's like the television, it's like these images coming before our eyes, you know, um, in, in living. We don't know how to use our imagination anymore because we're so used to just seeing images that we don't need to exercise our imagination. Children, same thing, they're watching images right away instead of making believe, using their imagination. So we need to imagine the mysteries. That's what St. Ignatius of Loyola teaches us, meditation. You meditate on an icon, on an image, an image of your mind. You're putting yourself in the gospel, and you put yourself there with Christ, with Mary, with the apostles, whatever the, the mystery is. And there's fruit that comes from that. So we really need to try to uh, use our imagination by meditating. Usen la imaginación. Any question? Other question? Yes, ma'am. What if you fall asleep when you're praying the rosary? Your guardian angel finishes it for you. <laughs> so, I love praying the rosary, and I just, I feel like, I just, I, the last thing I remember is feeling it drop out of my hand. It, it, so, sometimes in bed, can't sleep, Mary's rocking you. She's there, like, she's rocking you, and, and the devils are falling away, and you're just, you can sleep. I'm sorry, uh, there's a guy, uh, Gilbert, you'll go after him, okay, sorry. Father, uh, so on the historical part of the rosary, how, how did it come to be uh, the rosary as we know it now? I know uh, I've seen Creed was done through a council. What yes. about the rosary? So, gosh, you know, I didn't really go into the history. I do, um, it was, there was always been like a, there was the 150 Psalms, and those were always, and so they made like a, a Psalms for poor people that couldn't read, but instead it was the, our, the 15 Hail Marys, 150 uh, Hail Marys, the Psalter, it's called Mary's Psalter. But it was inspired by St. Dominic, like the Virgin Mary appeared to him. There's, there's a lot of historical evidence that there is a link with St. Dominic and, and, the, and the Virgin Mary. Um, so the one who really brings this out is Father Donald Calloway, who's speaking tonight, by the way, yeah. at Holy Rosary. Um, I couldn't, it was sold out, so don't worry, you couldn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and, uh, and uh, he talks a lot about the history, about the, um, that it comes from St. Dominic. Um, but what really, what he really added, St. Dominic, was putting the mysteries, was those mysteries that gave it the common form. Rather, the creed, all those things, the introductory prayers, those aren't as important. The, the heart of the rosary is, Our Father, Ten Hail Marys, and Glory Be, 
on those mysteries, meditating those mysteries. So even John Paul II, he didn't talk about the Fatima prayer. I do the Fatima prayer. Um, he doesn't, he says the whole Hail Holy Queen is fitting, you know. So, but the most important thing is those 10, you know, the, the, the Hail Marys and Our Father and the Glory be. Father, so in between the, uh, the mysteries, I follow a guide, and, I, and there's like a little, I have a little uh, a, a Bible reading for each particular uh-huh. mystery, and I love that. But uh, you don't have your guide, so you just say the mystery and have a picture in it. Yeah, along, exactly. Um, I just, you know, I'm praying the rosary, and I just like, I just say in my heart, like, okay, f- the incarnate, the uh, the resurrection, you know, and, and I just, or f- I just say it. You don't have to. Say the fifth mystery is the when you're by yourself, you know the fifth mystery is the resurrection. You just say, you just you just say to yourself the resurrection. It is good to like to say it, um, even in your, even silently, or just in your mind, you know, resurrection. So you just think of the resurrection. You know, you just then you you go on. Yeah. So if you're not using a guide, you try to memorize it. You can pull it up on your phone if you don't know the the mysteries. But sometimes, I'll be honest, I, I'm not until, like, I'll just keep, go, like, I'll pick up, like, the mystery in, like, after the f- first Hail Mary, second Hail Mary. Like, all of a sudden, like, their mystery will come in my mind where, but it's good to, like, think about it beforehand. Yeah. Because I do do the rosary pretty fast. I do 15 minutes. And I just, I walk, I walk, I'm walking around, I'm praying the rosary, and... <coughs> It's always like I'm always happy. After I finish the rosary, I'm just happy. Like I feel better. Like I can, like if I have an appointment and like there's another appointment right away. Sometimes I'd be like, I just need a little. Like we give me a couple minutes and I'll just like do a little walk. Even though I don't finish the rose, finish the whole rosary, it just helps me. Um, okay, last question. Um, so you were saying that there's power in prayer when you pray it together with other people I think you said that um, so my family likes to pray the rosary together but they like to do it really late at night and I get tired from work and I'm like I just don't feel like I want to stay up any longer to have to get up again so I've been trying to pray it by myself like in the mornings when I wake up but I don't know if that joins with like their prayer when they do it together um, I just feel bad that I don't join in mm-hmm. but there is something good about praying together um, that you basically you're praying that many rosaries yes. like if you're praying with a group of ten you just pray ten rosaries basically that's what this book says and I believe it but um, look I don't I actually prefer a rosary by myself to be honest uh, I do like the meditative part of it uh, so don't feel bad you know you just maybe join them when you can you know if it's too late, you want to pray in the morning, it's fine, right? So I think it's just good to try to do it. And you know what? If you can't do the whole rosary, uh, start with a decade. You know, there's this, something called a living rosary that John Paul II was in when he was a, a teen, uh, teenager. And there would be a group of 15 boys, and they each said, I'm going to do it. Uh, they each focus on a different decade mystery because there's 15, there used to be 15 mysteries in the rosary. And so they would each day focus on that mystery, and each boy would do a different mystery. So basically, and they were like united. And so they knew that even though they were by themselves doing it, they were all covering the whole rosary each day. It's called a living rosary. It's kind of like Exodus 90, but rosary style. It's like, <laughs> but you're, I have one more. you're doing it. Does it make a difference when you pray the rosary? Day or night? Oh, when you pray the rosary. Does it make a difference? Or, um, is it, or is it... No. I don't know, you know. I think it's like, I think the, it depends. It does not make a like, difference. Like, whatever's best for you and where, like, what you have in your, to pray for, or what's going to give you peace. Like, I don't um, know. Maybe you're in some kind of situation where it, it's a trouble. Oh yeah, when trouble situation. Look, the rosary is awesome because when when there's crises, 
it's like the rosary. Like it's just like people praying, like getting people to pray. Like we're an army. Like we're organized. I think it must be so impressive for um, like Protestants. God love them when they go to places and they see the Catholics all united. You know, praying the rosary. You know, there's something beautiful about that. Like vocal prayers. Um, but yeah, so it's like calling on God. Like. And it's and remember Mary's prayers are so powerful. So it's a powerful prayer. After the Mass, it's the most powerful prayer. Um, Liturgy of the Hours, but the Rosary is a very powerful prayer. Father Stephen, do you want to add anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, huh? Okay. He's. Oh, that's very nice of you. Yeah. So okay. Thanks. Yeah, I am playing uh, the drums in my fall festival, but the big thing is the fall festival. It's uh, this Saturday, Saturday, uh, the October 15th, um, from noon to 10 p.m. at St. Joseph, in front of St. Joseph Church on the street. It's closed. There's a variety of bands. Um, there's rock. There's, uh, I like rock, basically. So we have 80s, and uh, uh, there's a band, like, I'm playing with, with a guy at, I haven't seen them since high school, but I'm like jump, gonna sit in with their band for a little bit. Uh, and I, that's around two o'clock p.m. 1.30 is when they, they go on. And, uh, and then there's Latin music, uh, Tejano, there's a variety, so uh, mariachi. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. And there's a lot of games for adults and children and uh, great food. So, and, uh, so that's gonna help support our historic church. Thanks a lot. October 15th, like noon to 10, next, next Saturday. All right, Stephanie, thanks. As always, it's a blessing, and we're so happy at Spirit the Cathedral that you were able to join us as well. We extend this invitation to you every first Friday. We're here with Mass, catering, um, and guest speakers, and a bar, so we invite you back next month. And our fall festival will be on October 22nd, so you have a couple of weekends full of partying and festivity with your Catholic community. So please come out and support that. It's our first one that will kind of be full-fledged festival, and we'd love to see you there. And thank you so much for coming, and we hope you get home safely. Father, would you give us a blessing? <laughs> Sorry, I know we're going to let Father stop. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Father Stephen, you want to do it? <laughs> By the way, Father Stephen's, uh, he just got a sign here, right? Yeah. How long ago? Since Monday. Monday. <laughs> we, were, we had one season together on the basketball team. <laughs> and where did you come from again? Which parish? One Diego in Pasadena. One Diego in Pasadena. Awesome. All right. Well, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord God, we thank you for this time together um, that we can uh, become people of prayer to always um, remember the mysteries that l the Lord is real and he wants us to remember him, to remember him and all these mysteries, all he's done, and it's so full of meaning for all of us. And I ask that you... Uh, Help us to become uh, prayerful people, meditative people like Mary was, full of faith and hope and love. And uh, Mary, pray for everybody here. Pray for Steve, Father Stephen in his new assignment. And uh, bless everybody as we go forth, confident that, uh, that we are brothers and sisters of you, Jesus, and children of Mary. And may Almighty God bless and keep all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie.